So based on what we find with lymph node biopsy, with blood tests, with clinical exam, with symptoms, the Kesselman disease is divided into two groups. One is called localized Kesselman disease, which means there is only one area of lymph node involvement, which we can surgically remove, or multicentric Kesselman disease, which means the lymph nodes are at multiple sites, and that makes them not surgically treatable, operable disease. And we'll go through tr possible treatments pretty soon. So these are the two types, localized Kesselman disease, multicentric Kesselman disease. And then when we look at the pathology, histology, um, there are essentially three types. There are two types and the second one, third one being the mixture of both. So one is called highland vascular type of Kesselman's disease and the second one is called plasmacytic Kesselman disease. These are pathological diagnoses. We can look under microscope and diagnose these of the two and then occasional patients have a mixture of both so we can get a mixed pattern. Now the plasmacytic Kesselman disease is a little bit more aggressive in the sense it is, has more symptoms. It's usually multicentric and usually it needs systemic treatment, not just surgery. The localized Kesselman disease uh, uh, the highland vascular type of Kesselman disease is more often localized and uh, is less connected with symptoms. It's also less connected with interleukin-6 and others. So once patient has um, initial diagnosis done, uh, we do CAT scan of the neck, chest, abdomen and pelvis to see where else the lymph node is. Is it really localized? Is it multicentric? And that's an important test to do because that's going to drive how we treat the disease, how we treat the patients. So once we have done the lab test, we have done the x-rays, we have done the histology, we have looked for whether they are HHV8 positive or not, um, we have more or less complete picture of the disease. Now one, one cautionary note for histology is that it's not an easy diagnosis to make. Uh, and it's mainly because it's so rare. Um, pathologists, most of them have never seen it. So they might see their first case of Kesselman disease. In the book it is very well described, it's a very well described pathological diagnosis. But when you have not seen it and when you see a picture which is not black and white, which is quite often the case, you need real experience in diagnosing it. So it's important that the person who diagnoses Kesselman disease by pathology has experience or an experienced person has reviewed it then you need to be sure it is one versus another. In my practice, for example, one third of the patient who I see as Kesselman disease on review here doesn't end up being diagnosed with Kesselman disease. They have non-specific lymph node enlargement and other things. So a good pathological diagnosis is critical for what we do with these patients and how we treat them.